Hi everybody, this is video part two of the color theory assignment for week three, assignment three. Um, I dealt with week three assignment two in the previous video and now I'm going to talk about week three assignment three again for color theory. So this is the assignment in which we're taking two different colors and making them look like the same color. So once again you need to set up the basic structure of, um, of a foreground and a background and it's simplest just to do this with uh, rectangles. So draw a rectangle, a larger rectangle, and then draw a smaller rectangle in the middle. And then just copy these, click and drag a, a big er box um, using the black arrow tool to select both the larger square and the smaller rectangle rather. And then I just hold down um, Alt to select both of them to get that little double arrow or option on the Mac and copy the format over because you're going to have two colors placed side by side. The other thing you need to do to set this up, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the last video, you need to eliminate the stroke or the black outline that surrounds this, the central swatch or the foreground swatch. Um, this helps the colors interact with one another more. So what I'll do is I'm going to select this rectangle. I'm going to go to this little box here which is the stroke options and I'm going to click, click, click on the white box with the red slash through it. The red slash means no stroke. So that gets rid of the stroke for the box which kind of makes the boxes disappear initially but if you click in their general vicinity you, you'll notice that they are still in fact there. They just um, aren't visible because they don't have a black outline around them anymore. And so then the next step is to select your central uh, foreground colors that you're going to try to make look the same. So you need two colors that are different. You want them to be different enough but also related to one another such that it will you can um, shift them to bring them closer together. So it's best to choose colors that are kind of analogous that are next to each other on the color wheel. Makes it a lot easier. So first I'm going to choose my color for this central swatch double click to open the color picker, go to my hue slider, um, I'm going to pick kind of a, a magenta color here and I'm going to make it um, I'm going to make it fairly brightly saturated and also fairly light in value uh, kind of a light bright pink um, color something like that and okay so that's my first color and then I choose my second color needs to be related to the first color but it needs to be different enough and so this color I've made uh, brightly saturated uh, light value and a pink uh, magenta rather hue so now this one I'm going to I'm going to shift the hue slider down more to the violet end um, and violet is darker than magenta to begin with so it's going to already be a little bit darker, a little bit less saturated than the uh, magenta that I've chosen. And so that's going to be my second color. So those are two very different colors. Um, and you can look here in the color uh, palette here. If you don't see the color palette, choose view. Uh, where is it? No, choose window. Sorry. Choose window color palette and it should open up the color palette on the right hand side. You can also pull out the whole um, the whole thing right here, but just to show what we need to see, here's the color palette. <coughs> so, um, and you can look at the hue and saturation and brightness on the side of the color palette here. You might have RGB displayed, but if you click on this little downward point pointing arrow, you can pull up hue, saturation, and brightness instead of RGB, and uh, just put the check mark next to the hue, saturation, and brightness HSB, and then that will show you the values the different values. So you want these values to be somewhat different from one another. Here my saturation value is 77%, here it's 56, here my brightness is 93, and here my brightness is 85. And then of course the hue, um, hue is also different. So they are different from one another and that's sufficiently different. Um, okay, so now how do I get them to look the same? Well again I've got to think about the principles of ground subtraction. Um, what I need to do to this uh, mis this uh, magenta color, which I actually want to pull it down a little bit, um, this magenta color to make it look more violet. Well, I need to pull out the magenta qualities to make it look more violet. So I'm going to select the background, <coughs> and 
I'm also thinking about the fact that I need to make this uh, look a little bit more muted and also darker in, va in value. So I'm, I need to think about the three variables of hue, value, and saturation. might be easier to do one at a time in terms of your manipulation. Um, but so now I'm thinking about what co background color will make this look this foreground color look more violet. So again, like I said, to make it look more violet, I need to pull out the magenta qualities. So I'm going to choose a background color that's even more like a like a strong magenta. And I'm going to bump up the saturation on it. And to make it look darker, I'm going to make it a really bright background. Because remember, it, it pulls out its own qualities from the foreground. OK, so there we have my bright magenta background pulling out its qualities from the foreground color. And you can already see that it's made the central, the central uh, foreground um, swatch appear to be more violet than it was previously. Okay. Um, okay, so now I move over here to my violet, and I need to bring this violet down to make it look more magenta. So what do I need to do? I need to pull out the violet qualities of this to make it closer to the magenta. So again, I think about the background color. I'm going to go slide down a little bit here to um, the, an even more darker violet end. Um, I need to make it lighter. So I need to make the foreground color lighter, so that means I need to make the background color darker. And in terms of saturation, I need to make the foreground color more saturated, so I need to make the background color, uh, uh, wait, I need to make the, sorry, I need to make the foreground uh, more saturated, so I need to make the background less saturated. Um, so you do have to think through how this is going to affect what you, y your outcome is. And, you know, it's kind of a guessing game. You're never quite sure if the color you pick is going to be... Oops, I was affecting the foreground color. Um, let me undo that and go back and then select the background and change the background color. Make sure you've selected the right swatch. Okay, so I need to move this down this way and this up this way and this down this way and saturation down, brightness down and hue a little bit more close to that and let's try that. You never really sh you can never really can be 100% certain <coughs> if the manipulations that you choose are going to give you the correct results. You just have to get as close as you can and then uh, tweak it a little bit. So this is my this is my first best guess basically. I thought about ground subtraction. I realized I needed to make my foreground violet looked more magenta, so I knew I wanted to pull out some of the magenta. I also knew that I needed to make it more saturated, so I made the background less saturated to make the foreground appear more saturated. I also knew that I needed to make it brighter because it's it was darker than this magenta over here. So to make this appear brighter, I needed to make the background darker. Okay, so all of these things I was thinking, and this is the this is a, this is the result so far uh, of my attempt to make this color look to be the same as this color. And I would say that this is actually pretty close. If I take this swatch here with the black arrow tool, hold down Alt to copy it and bring it down here. C select this swatch, hold down Alt to copy it. Option on the Mac again to to copy it, bring it down here. You can see how different these colors really are when you put them next to each other. But when we look at them against their backgrounds, they look pretty similar to one another now. So um, I would call this fairly successful. You could tweak it a little bit more. You could look at this and say, well, I've made this, I've made this color, which, was, which actually is very dark, appear to be even lighter than this color. So you could think about um, adjusting, fine-tuning the value adjustments to make to make the values appear to be the same. And again, it's all an, it's all an optical illusion. So you have to trust the judgment of your eyes in trying to see how close you've brought these colors together. Okay. So um, at this point, it's just um, fine-tuning your your uh, manipulations. But once you get within the ballpark. Um, it's easier to think about the individual manipulating the individual variables of hue, value, and saturation to bring the effect closer to being um, almost perfect.